Hi, my name's Joy Hitchcocks, and this is a breakdown of my rugby league career so far. Uh, my rugby league career actually started uh, sort of where I'm from in, in Byron Bay, Australia there, uh, the most easterly point of Australia. I actually started playing footy at quite a young age, about six or seven years old. Uh, the local team, the Byron Bay Red Devils, actually folded um, when I got to about 10, 11, and they didn't have enough players. So I joined the next closest team, which was uh, the Mullumbimby Giants, where I spent most of my junior and the very beginning of um, some senior footy there before moving. It was pretty good there, really. Uh, There's a lot of players from that area that um, they call it the biggest little town in Australia. But um, yeah, I think there's some of the most notable players is like Dane Chisholm, uh, Jacob Miller. Uh, I think there's Jack Kordowski, who's playing for the Rabbitohs at the moment. Young fella just made his debut for the Melbourne Storm the other day. So there's a lot of young players, a lot of up and coming players and a sort of a big catchment area for rugby league from um, just that little tiny town with a population of only like 3,000 people. So it's pretty crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, I transitioned into the first grade team there uh, at the age of 16. A bit of a different thing for me playing with senior players and playing with sort of men against well, I was still a kid basically. Um, from there, I signed my first ever contract, which was with the Gold Coast Titans, and it was for no money and just like some training gear that was all two sizes too big. So that worked out really well. And um, yeah, from, from there, I actually ended up signing with their uh, national youth team, which was like under 20s um, Toyota Cup. I joined uh, the Gold Coast on a two year deal. I actually moved up there to Palm Beach, Corumbin and, and started playing sort of some, I guess we're, we're, most of us were working. Um, players like Jordan Rankin and stuff and the, the bigger money players weren't, weren't working, but um, they were training with a first grade team. But yeah, we were working, uh, the, se the sessions were sort of like 5.30 a.m. Go to work and then 5.30 p.m. So there was some, you know, 16 hour plus days. And when you're going from doing nothing, coming straight out of school to, um, to them, it's a bit of a bit of a culture shock and a bit, a bit of a shock to the system as far as a ruthless training session is um, concerned. But yeah, I spent two years there. It was pretty good. Um, I don't think we ever made the the finals there, but we had a pretty good team and a lot of them players ended up going on to to make the NRL debuts and some of them are still playing. Um, yeah, that, so that was a pretty good experience. I made my first real experience of what a sort of a full time ish rugby league community is all about. From there, I moved to the Melbourne Storm, which was again another inaugural year for Melbourne, having a New South Wales Cup base team in Melbourne. Usually they send players across to feeder clubs and, and all sorts of different places, uh, Queensland Cup, New South Wales Cup, all over the shop. So yeah, that 2010 year, I think it was, they had a, or two, yeah, 2010 or 11, they had a, um, a Melbourne based New South Wales Cup team. Um, I signed a one year contract down there as a whole, it probably wasn't really successful having a Melbourne-based cup team because I just don't think we had the resources and everything that, to go along with what we really needed. We still had a decent team. It, it went all right. Um, for me personally, I probably had... I was playing fullback back then, so I had obviously like one of the best players that's ever played the game in Billy Slater above me if we're looking at um, a debut in the NRL. I, don't, I think that was pretty much off the cards, but I also had like Gareth Widdop, who was um, back then, he was a fullback. So I had a lot of players in front of me there that were pretty some pretty talented players. So that was probably not going to happen. After that, I moved to Sydney. Um, where I sort of started working, just um, working full time as a contractor, a subcontractor, just doing um, external house cleaning and roof cleaning and all sorts of all sorts of little jobs and, and all that all over the place. But um, yeah, I sort of stopped playing rugby league and I took up rugby union for a little bit. Um, played some rugby sevens, which I was all right at rugby sevens, but the the fifteen man game was a different story because. Um, I sort of like broken play and uh, I kept running away from my teammates and I get the ball stripped or the, or the so, so the ruck would um, I just lo lose possession in the ruck. Um, so yeah, while that game sometimes seems like fundamentally the same as rugby league, it's actually very different at um, at its base. Yeah, so I started uh, started playing rugby union down there at Manly Marlins and um, 
had some had some pretty good success in the rugby sevens. We actually ended up winning the, like a tournament there with the rugby sevens, so that was all good. But rugby union as a whole, uh, no, nah, it wasn't my forte. So um, anyway, I ended up taking up a contract with the West Tigers. Initially a one year, ended up being a three year. Um, I sort of found a bit of a home there, and I found actually like the position that I sort of wanted to play. Whereas I was moving from. Uh, Fullback. I actually started as a 5'8 in my junior career. I moved to fullback, played a fair bit of fullback, then played a fair bit of wing, wing fullback. Went to the West Tigers, started playing a bit of centre. So I was sort of all over the shop of where I was going to sort of, what position I was going to be. Didn't really want to continue to be like a utility back where it was just put me where you want me coach sort of type situation. I sort of wanted a spot where I could just call me own and um, found that in playing wing. While I did still mix up throughout them, them few years there, I sort of found a home at West Tigers. Uh, so I was really settled, I had a good living environment, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I actually lived with Dane Chisholm from Featherstone at, uh, in the Sydney's inner west there, good part of the world. And um, yeah, I continued on there. We made a grand final in 2012. Um, I broke my ankle in the game before. So yeah, sort of a career. <laughs> with some serious injuries throughout it. But yeah, I broke my ankle in um, the, the major semi-final to make the grand final. We ended up making that. I think we're one of the only teams that have ever made it from eighth uh, with that old NRL system, from eighth to the grand final. So we beat you know the, the minor premiers and stuff like that on our way through, which was a pretty massive achievement for us. That was playing for Balmain, which was, it's now West Tigers, but the old Balmain uh, feeder club. Yeah, made that grand final and we went on to play Newtown Jets, which is the Sydney Roosters feeder club. Uh, and we ended up losing by two points, I think. We actually scored a try to put us in front with two or three minutes to go. And um, that was the first time they ever used video referee at, in a New South Wales Cup match. And uh, they, they went to it and there was a small knock on from subsequently the winger that took my spot. <laughs> so I still give him some shit for that today. But um, yeah, no, it was good times and uh, another another good experience for me. And then I uh, ended up signing the two years on the back of that. So stayed at West Tigers. To be honest, the dream of playing NRL had sort of died by that stage. And I was 24 years old for a lot of outside backs. Um, a debut was somewhere between 18 and 23. 18, 22, even, even 22, you, if, you, if you're not in and around that mix, not that you would got no chance, but it's just, there's so many other 18, 19, even now 17 year olds coming through that they can sort of make into an established first grader over that period of time. And it would just benefit the clubs a lot more. So yeah, I that sort of just stopped. I was, I was, I was happy working, I was happy um, training part-time, playing in a pretty reasonably good competition which is that New South Wales Cup comp. And I was just content with that. And then um, one day I got a call from Mick Potter to say, oh, can you come in and train with us? I think James Tedesco was injured or, or yeah, I think James Tedesco was injured. And um, they said, uh, can you come in and train with us? I was like, yeah, no worries. Called my boss, he was filthy that I was missing work for the, for, I didn't just for the foreseeable future. And um, yeah, I didn't really think I was gonna get a crack and then, um, I had two training sessions and they said, mate, I'm gonna, you're gonna make your debut this week. And I was like, a 24 year old, I'm no longer a young kid. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, like it's, while it is my childhood dream, I'm like a bit of a man now where it's not like, you know, like you see them videos of them young 18 year old kids getting their debut and they're in tears in the coach's office. It wasn't really like that at all. It was just like, thanks mate, like, this is awesome. And then I just give my family a call and stuff. But um, yeah, we I made my debut against the Roosters. Uh, I think there was about five rounds to go, or four or five rounds to go in the general season. Yeah, it was a bit of a wet night at Leichhardt and uh, we actually got pumped by the Roosters 40 to four. It was only eight nil at half time. Um, and then they just pumped us in the second half. But uh, yeah, I scored our only try. So I was pretty happy with that. It was like right in the corner where my family was. So I got to see my grandma who's like a massive part of the my journey and um, uh, why I've got to where I've got to today. So yeah, that was, that was pretty massive for me. I ended up playing the, the next four NRL games after that, or finish the season there, basically. Um, so that was good. I, I ended up playing three different positions, which going back to where I wanted to cement sort of a position in my career, I ended up playing wing, fullback and centre for them last four games. So um, yeah, a bit, bit diverse. But uh, yeah, after that, I, um, I didn't really get the contract that I was hoping for. 
and things didn't really work out. Living in Sydney is really quite expensive, and the deal that I got offered was just I was just I was just sort of sick of living that sort of month by month lifestyle, is like um, which I, which I, what I was living at the time. I ended up taking a deal with Featherstone for subsequently much less cash anyway. And um, I just wanted a, a new experience and, a, and something different. Um, I was sort of stuck in a rut as far as um, what was out there for me uh, outside work. I wanted to sort of just stop working and concentrate and see if I could really make something of footy. Um, I knew obviously the Super League was not not exactly the same standard as the NRL and it would fit, fit my playing style a little bit better and opportunity wise I took the deal with Featherstone in hopes that we would either make Super League with via promotion with Featherstone or um, I would get a deal in in the Super League um, got to landed in Fev I think it was minus two degrees or something I left in um, I left in thongs well I left in flip flops which which I realized later that you call flip-flops and I call them thongs and people were thinking I was wearing underwear. Yeah, it was absolutely freezing. I was wearing a vest, flip-flops and some shorts and I landed in London and it was just absolutely freezing. Uh, touchdown in Featherstone, a bit of another culture shock for me, coming from the beaches of Byron Bay to, <laughs> to Fev. But no, some lovely people there and they're really passionate about their rugby league and um, I had a good time there to be honest. I had some good mates there, but um, it didn't quite really work out. There was a few things it's pretty well documented amongst Fev fans or they think they know what they're talking about when it comes to why I left, but uh, they don't. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, that ended after one year, which was meant to be a two year. Uh, I actually went back home and I was going to continue playing back in Australia and um, Castleford was a little bit interested and I, I couldn't wait too long where I was, so I actually moved back home. And um, I think they were waiting to sign another player. I don't know if it was Joel Monaghan or, or what happened, but anyway, they ended up getting both. And um, yeah, they, they eventually said, look, yeah, we'll take you. And it was quite late. I think, I think pre-season training had already started. I got on the next flight, which is like five days later, landed in Cass. Um, obviously pretty familiar with the area still because I was only living five, 10 minutes away from there anyway. Anyway, got in there, met everyone. I only really knew one person, which was uh, Junior Moores who um, was actually in that West Tigers grand final I was spoken about earlier in 2012. Yeah, so joined them, which was again, a one year deal. Um, made my debut for Cass against Hull. I went all right in that game and um, short time later, they, they extended that to a two, two more years on top of that one year. So it ended up being more like three. So that was pretty good. Uh, obviously we had some good success there, especially that 2017 season where we went on and only lost like three or four games and obviously made a grand final. A great year for me as well. I got a fair bit of game time um, in and in between. I guess having Denny Solomona and Greg Eden in front of you is, um, you wouldn't really want that <laughs> if you're a winger, but it ended up working all right. And obviously Denny moved on and um, I got some more game time there. But I think that 2017 year was just a, a massive year for everyone, even the club, the fans, it's just, just everyone. I felt like there was just a really good vibe around the team that we just couldn't we just couldn't lose. I don't want that to sound like cocky or anything. Like we just I think there was one one game in particular we played Saints at home. I think I actually started on the bench, but we debuted like I think it might have been around the Easter period and Pally was resting some players and, and I think we had all our England players out plus a few others. Uh, we were just using that time that we went success so successfully through the season that we could afford to, I guess, play some younger players. And when you're at other clubs during them situations, you sort of think, oh, there's no pressure here. Like, we're playing some younger players. We might get pumped. We're playing Saints, who are a pretty credible, really good side. They had a full strength side out. And uh, usually you think, oh, look, if we get pumped here, it's all right. But um, we actually were just like buzzing. Like, there was a young, there's so many younger guys that, like, I think around Jake Truman and Kieran Gill and stuff like that, like players that were making their debuts around that area. And the the general sort of consensus was, oh, look, if we lose here, it don't really matter. But we were just hungry to win. And we sort of stuck with them all the way through and ended up getting them in the end. And that sort of, um, I guess that sort of vibe was 2017 that we could just win anything. And it didn't matter who played and who was put in different positions and how many injuries we had, we would, we would just win. 
I actually wasn't picked to play in that grand final that year. Um, I was going to be 18th man. And um, obviously with everything that happened with Zach, I got the call off Pally. I think uh, Michael Shenton, uh, Shenny was in an in injury doubt with his quad. Pally called me and I was actually in Sainsbury's and I was like, hey, mate, like, what's up? <laughs> he never calls me. <laughs> and um, and uh, I was like, yeah, what's happening? And he was like, yeah, look, mate, I'm going to play you. And I was like, oh, that's uh, I'm like, I feel bad for Shenny. He was obviously our captain. I'm thinking that he was out, but it ended up turning out to be the Zach situation. So, and the Shenny ended up playing. So, um, yeah, I had about two days notice, three days notice with that. I had one training session. And then we went straight up to um, Old Trafford and was, uh, sort of went through uh, all the pre-grand final um, dramas that come with it. So, yeah, uh, that was pretty great for me as well, though. A massive experience. don't think I'll ever forget walking out that tunnel and just the deafening noise of just whatever there was, 74,000 people. Oh, that was just crazy. Um, as far as the footy, obviously, everyone knows how that went. I still haven't watched that grand final tape. I don't think anyone's watched it. I've seen like little glimpses of it on Sky Sports when it shows like 15 minutes before a kickoff and it gives you the highlights and I'm just like, nah, not today. I don't know. I, I, I can't really speak for everyone and what happened. Um, it was just, it was just different. I think um, I, there was an article done by, by someone. I can't remember who it was, but it was, it was in the lead up to the grand final and they brought up a point. I think it might have been Jamie Peacock or something that brought up a point um, about. Leeds having 20 players from their squad that have played in a grand final before. Um, and we'd only had one, which is Shenny. And I think it was for Saints or something and he'd lost that game. The experience of sort of big game, big game players or big name players or whatever you want to call it. I think that was a good point that got really overlooked. And when you look back at it, like um, me, look at me and myself looking back at that grand final, things you can do differently. And like, I just think you let the moment get a hold of you and, um, it sort of just becomes a blur. Like there's a lot of things that I can't even remember throughout the match. Like I can't, I really can't remember anything. I remember walking out, uh, you remember bits and pieces, but it's not until you see tiny little clips on a TV or something where you're like, oh, that actually happened. Like, and how you could have done things differently personally. That's just me. I can't obviously speak for everyone, but also the pitch is obviously the ground's amazing, but it's just the worst possible rugby league conditions. I mean, it's like, it's like three or four degrees. I don't know what they put on the pitch up there. It's just greasy and slippery. And obviously as a winger, the pitches are so tiny. I think I went over for a, for a try that got brought back for a, um, a, a shepherd or an obstruction. And um, I remember diving on the ball and scoring it and just flying straight into the billboards. There's not much room there for anyone. Even in the warm up, I was sort of off the pitch doing some kick catch, but yeah, it's just a dewy, slippery pitch. And um, but obviously they're playing on that pitch as well. So there's really no excuses there. They played well and um, yeah, they deserve the win, which is quite a bit of pill to swallow. <laughs> yeah, uh, after that, I uh, sort of come into the end of my time. I had some pretty shocking injuries throughout my time at Cast, So subsequently didn't play many games. It got towards the end of my third year there. I think we obviously we've lost Zach and we never really replaced him with an out and out fullback. We had different players switch in and in and out and it was just obviously affecting the team. And um, Pally and Wellesley sort of had a chat to me and just said, look, we've got an option to bring in a fullback, but that would mean a quota position. He's like, we would like to keep you, but right now we need a fullback more than we need a winger. So that ended up going through. They signed Pete Mitiadi. I actually was still at Cass, but I was just deregistered. And during my time of being deregistered, I was able to play the last three or four games on a dual reg agreement with um, with Bradford. I was actually coming back from a broken back. Um, so I yeah, I returned from a broken back after about nine weeks out, played the last four games at Bradford. Uh, we ended, I think one of the games we beat someone 120 nil. So it was a massive scoreline and um, we ended up playing, I think it was Workington in the, we played Workington in a semi-final and a final, I think. Yeah. Or we might have played York and then, yeah. I think they lost to York the week before I went there. But anyway, um, we ended up playing uh, Workington in a, in the main final and we ended up getting the job done and getting them promoted. So that was good. If I wasn't going to be playing any footy at Cass, at least I was to go somewhere and actually help someone um, get promoted. So yeah, from that, I ended up signing two years at, at Bradford. I actually really enjoyed my time there. A great bunch of blokes and we were really building a, a really solid squad. I mean, if you look around at Super League teams now, especially, well, basically they took 
how chaotic everyone. <laughs> and, uh, but look, they're all playing Super League. Um, blokes like Ethan Ryan, Elliot Minchella, Joe Keys, um, Matty Staunton. Look, they're going to play Super League for many years to come and probably different teams and, and all over that sort of stuff. But that sort of team we had at, Brad at Bradford, that would have been a really good team. You know, the likes of Dane Chisholm, um, you've got myself and Jake Webster. Uh, they were sort of building to, to definitely be in promotion, I don't think for that first year, but definitely for that for that second year. And, and obviously, um, it's pretty well documented how how that all turned out. And there was obviously administration problems, which was nothing to do with the players, but that were affecting the players. So everyone sort of started to leave, and the truth started to come out. It was it was just it was pretty upsetting, just because we were working our backsides off, and and for all that to happen, which is no no fault of our own. And then uh, just sort of turn out, turn my two-year deal and, and many others just like up on its head, and, and everyone's really unsure of, of what's going on. Yeah, I, I actually spoke to J.K., who was actually he was great throughout the whole thing, really. And it, the, the staff were in the same boat as we, as we were. So um, yeah, I spoke to him and I said, look, mate, being a overseas quota spot, most of the Super League is already full. I think it was like when I sort of spoke to some people, there was 90% of the Super League was full. There was two teams that. Need, they had one quota spot available and they weren't looking for a winger, they were looking for back rowers or, or whatever. So it was really difficult to actually find uh, um, placement just in, 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 at the best of times, um, let alone when it's like this. And I obviously have a young family, you've got two kids and a missus, they're British, they're all on British passports. So being a rugby league player, we don't earn millions. It wasn't like I could be like, don't worry, we'll take eight months off and travel around and then I'll get us a house and stuff like that. It doesn't work like that. You know, we've got to get straight into it. Like I'd have to get a job. I would have had to get a job in the next two months. So I was just worried about where it left me, where I'd need to go, how I would relocate my family. Like I can't work. I can't work in England. I can't work in Australia straight away without a job. They can't come to Australia without visas and all sorts. It was just all sorts of stuff going through in my mind and it was a really stressful time period for me and I was just like look I need to find something rather than run the gauntlet of if I was 18 19 20 year old kid and I just I just run the gauntlet and be like look wherever I end up I'll be okay but I have other people to think about you know I've got a missus and the two young children so I just thought to myself well I'm gonna just do what's best for us and I uh, spoke to JK and, and Toulouse popped up I ended up taking the deal pretty quickly and um, yeah, sold all our stuff, left, left the house and um, I moved over here by myself to get set up while my partner finished her maternity leave. Yeah, it all happened really quickly. Found myself in Toulouse, uh, wee wee and uh, <laughs> yeah, um, my French is still terrible. Yeah, pick, picking it up slowly, but yeah, I'm not really enjoying it. Definitely the weather's a whole lot better. I mean, summer over here is absolutely ridiculously hot. It gets up to like 40 degrees, which I actually experienced it when I was at Bradford and we played over in Toulouse. It was like 36 degrees for kickoff. So really enjoying it. Family's all here now. They took, took about five months, four or five months to get everyone over here. Um, really settled, really liking it. You know, we've got, um, we're definitely a club building. I know. They've obviously been building for a few years before I come, but they're still making inroads and got a really fantastic stadium playing out at the state Toulouse. Um, we sort of just ground share with them. They build us some dressing sheds. Training's really professional. It's basically a full-time environment here. And I'm, I'm really settled, really enjoying it. Uh, loving the weather, loving learning a new skill in French. And, um, and all, all the boys are fantastic. So yeah, that sort of brings me up to date with where I'm at. And um, hopefully got a few more years left in the tank. <laughs>